we will take a very quick uh, review of uh, partially ordered sets uh, just uh, in case uh, some of you are not familiar with the uh, partially ordered sets or uh, not come across uh, these uh, uh, definitions and properties so this will be very quick uh, we will uh, not spend too much time on this because this is just this is not part of what we uh, you know uh, are studying in this course but you know something that is required to uh, you know to see some of the results or, or understand some of the results okay so what is a partially ordered set so a partially ordered set p is a set uh, now the set uh, you know is also denoted a p it's an abuse of notation but uh, you know it is clear uh, from the context so therefore we don't worry about that so we will represent the same uh, uh, set which is a base uh, set and as well as the the structure uh, power set both uh, with the same letter p so the power set p is a set together with a binary relation uh, you know denoted less than or equal to in in our most cases or sometimes you can use other symbols it doesn't matter but it will be explicitly mentioned uh, uh, such that this uh, binary relation is uh, first of all reflexive that is x is less than or equal to x for every x in p right for every element it is uh, less than or equal to itself right? so it, uh, it's in relation with itself so that is reflexive then uh, it's anti-symmetric which means that uh, if you know that x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to x then it implies uh, x is equal to y Okay. So, I read it as x less than or equal to because of the symbol that we use. But, uh, you know, uh, to be more precise, you should just say that x is related to y and y is related to x. But, uh, you know, let us not worry about that for the time. And then the third condition is that it must be transitive. The you know, transitive property is there. That the relation x is less than or equal to y and y less than or equal to z implies x is less than or equal to z. So, if you have these three properties uh, for the set with this relation, then we say that this is uh, a partially ordered set or it's a partial order. Now, uh, without uh, writing it, let me just mention, uh, you know, when the relation is strict, okay, now when, when we don't allow reflexivity, so the then the relation is uh, strict, it's a strict partial order. And we will not look at uh, strict partial order uh, in this uh, course. <coughs> okay. So example. So let us see. So take the uh, you know the set of uh, integers one to eight. Okay. One two three four five six seven eight. And then I look at the uh, you know for the relation. I I look at the divisibility relation. Okay. So a divides b if b is divisible by a. Right. Uh, so this symbol is used for the uh, you know, divisibility for uh, a and b in x. Okay. Then uh, you know x uh, with the relation uh, divisibility is a power set. Okay. So you can see that uh, for example two divides four, right? Uh, three divides six, and two does not divide five. Right? So two and five are not related. Three does not divide seven. Uh, one divides two. One, uh, 2 divides 4 and 4 divides 8 and you know by transitivity 1 divides 4 right 2 divides 8 right 1 divides 8 etc then 1 divides 5 and 1 divides 7 right so these are uh, you know uh, uh, yeah so this is the power set uh, it you know you can verify that you know reflexivity is true that 1 is less than or equal to y right 1 divides y 2 divides 2 etc right every element divides itself and uh, Anti-symmetric, right? So if uh, two divides something and something divides two, then uh, you know they must be the same, right? So that you can see, right? Verify that any element dividing uh, another num element and uh, that dividing this it means that they must be the same element. So you can verify all the three properties and then uh, uh, see that this is actually a partially ordered set. Now. Another example, this is a very important example that uh, you will come uh, to see with it many times. 
So X be uh, the set, uh, you know, some arbitrary set and the power set of X uh, is denoted by P of X. Now the subset relation, right? So this depends a partial order on the power set. Okay. So let us take an example. Uh, X is equal to a three element set ABC. Then, uh, you know, you know, the empty set, for example, is a subset. So empty set uh, is, uh, uh, you know, it's a sub, you know a subset of, uh, for example, uh, set A, set B, set C, etc. Right. Similarly, uh, A is a subset of AB. Uh, a is a subset of AC. Right. B is a subset of BC. B is a subset of AC. Right. So uh, all these uh, one can see. Right. Now uh, I did not introduce formally what this picture means right so we will come to this uh, you know more formally later but this is basically a kind of graph where uh, you know you represent the elements uh, of p as uh, you know as vertices of a graph and uh, you know when uh, when you have two elements uh, uh, you know where one is contained in the other and there is nothing in between you put a you know line between them and if uh, if you have an element that is a subset of or or you know less than or equal to in the relation then uh, you know uh, you make sure that you know the the element that is uh, the larger one right and any one uh, is uh, above uh, in some sense you know horizontally above so it's it's formally you know we will define a little later uh, but you know it's much easier to write than you know all the subsets uh, one by one so uh, so this depends a uh, partially ordered set. You can verify that you know the reflectivity, transitivity, and uh, uh, anti-symmetric properties uh, hold. And uh, now you can generalize to uh, uh, a set with n elements and power set of x is equal having two raised to n elements, which is denoted by two raised to set n. Uh, now the you know the usual notation that we will use for this specific power set uh, no specific uh, partially ordered set uh, is a bn so so bn says that you are looking at the you know two raised to n uh, uh, subsets of an n element set let's say one to n and then uh, you are looking at the containment uh, or subset relation as the uh, as the order relation so uh, you know this is a partially ordered set now, uh, more uh, definitions. So when uh, when I know when I take any two elements uh, of the poset P, let's say X and Y, if X is less than or equal to Y or Y is less than or equal to X, then we say X and Y are comparable. So you know if you, if you look at the uh, this example, for, right? So for example, two and five, if you take. 2 does not divide 5 and 5 does not divide 2. So therefore 2 and 5 are not really compared, right? So, you know, with, with respect to the division, right? The relation. And similarly, if you take uh, AB and AC, right? So if you take AB and AC here, right? They are also not comparable. You cannot say one is a subset of the other or this is a subset of that. So therefore they are not comparable. So, <coughs> Uh, when uh, you know this property holds for one of the pairs, then we say that uh, uh, they are compared. Now, suppose you have two possess P and Q. We say that P and Q are isomorphic. If you can find an order preserving uh, bijection, right? Let us say phi that takes uh, P to Q, whose inverse is also order preserving. So when I say order preserving, X. Uh, is less than or equal to y in p right so this says that the relation is uh, inside p right so p and q can have different uh, you know, relations so therefore uh, now uh, phi of x right is an element of q is less than or equal to phi of y in q so if this relation is if and only if then we say this is an isomorphism and 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 uh, uh, we also want that inverse is also order preserving now Right, so that's why that's why this if and only if. 
now suppose you have a bijection and uh, you know you know that it is the bijection is order preserving is it necessary that the inverse is also order preserving or can you find an example where it is not so think about this if you find an example uh, let me know or or you write it as a homework <coughs> now so given a poset we can talk about a sub poset so a sub poset is a subset of course uh, and uh, the relation right x is less than or equal to uh, y in uh, in q if and only if x is less than or equal to y in p for x and y in q right so for all the elements in q right which is the subset this should be true right then we say that it is a sub poset so there is a you know there is a weak uh, version of the uh, sub poset definition where uh, you don't uh, insist this if and only if condition but we will not go into that okay so we will whenever we say it's a sub poset we will say that it's a, an induced sub poset or uh, you know the uh, the relation uh, is maintained exactly as it is for all the elements within q now for uh, two elements x and y the interval xy is defined as the set of all elements in in p in the poset such that uh, you know z comes between x and y right so x is less than or equal to z is less than or equal to y okay so this set is always non empty it will contain at least x and y uh, or at least we want uh, we want uh, uh, it to depend like that uh, and uh, so the interval uh, is uh, this set uh, this non empty set now a poset is said to be locally finite if uh, every interval uh, in p is finite so the p itself may not be finite but if you can say that uh, you know every interval is finite right so once you take fix two elements x and y then uh, you know between x and y the number of elements right that appears is finite so then we say it is locally finite now uh, when you have two elements in the poset uh, let's say x and y i say that y covers x if uh, first of all x strictly less than y and there is no element z such that x less than z less than y okay so that you know so they are comparable right because x is less than y but there is no element in between okay so then we say that it is uh, a covering relation so comparability should be there but there is no element in between right then we say it is uh, it is a covering relation so which means that x is less than y strictly less than y and uh, the interval xy is precisely the set x comma y now formal definition of hasse diagram is that it is a graph uh, on the vertex set uh, uh, as the elements of p right with the you know the vertices as the elements of p and the edges are the covering relations okay so the edges of p are the covering relations that is you know when you have uh, when you have uh, an elements in between right you don't so even though phi is a subset of let's say every set you don't put an edge like this because uh, there is already a set right uh, let's say a which is comes in between uh, ab and uh, phi right so therefore i only put this edge and then the edge connecting this so this two together tells me that you know there is uh, there is this uh, uh what do you call uh can i know the comparability but uh, uh we it is not a covering relation so i will not put the additional line now we also that uh, make sure that in the hasse diagram when x is strictly less than y uh y is uh, you know marked uh, it is marked uh, y is marked Uh, above x horizontally right so appears horizontally in the uh, above uh, the uh, smaller element so <clears throat>
So example, uh, here are two hazard diagrams. So one for the faucet that we considered earlier, right? The uh, faucet which contains uh, contains uh, the one to eight and uh, the divisibility. So we saw that uh, one uh, divides uh, two, three, five, seven, right? They are precisely the prime numbers if you observe. And then uh, you know two divides four, right? And uh, two covers four because there is nothing in between. Four divides eight, two divides also six, three divides six, and uh, no other elements does not divide any other elements. So we get the complete description of the faucet uh, here in the Hasse diagram. So once you have the Hasse diagram, you know the faucet. So here is another example, right? You have x and y, and x is less than t, x is less than z, then uh, y is less than z, and y is less than u. Right. T is less than W, Z is less than W, T and U are less than V. Right. Now, <coughs> we say that the faucet P has a zero if uh, you can find uh, an element, uh, you know, uh, so I, I denote by zero hat. Right. So if you can find an element, uh, uh, special element such that, uh, uh, zero hat says that x is greater than or equal to zero hat for every x. Right? It means that this is a kind of minimal element, right? So if every element is less than, uh, is greater than or equal to this, then it is a zero. Similarly, uh, p is said to have a one if you can find an element such that every other element is less than or equal to this element. Okay, so this is. Uh, Uh, and uh, if you have a faucet p, then you can denote by uh, p hat as the new faucet that you obtain by adding an additional zero and a one to p. So you add uh, two elements, introduce two elements, and make one as the minimum element that you know it is less than or equal to every other element, and then uh, one as greater than or equal to every other element. So if you do that, then you get a new faucet p p hat so you know even if p originally had a zero you can still add it but then you know the original zero may not be the zero anymore right so here is an example you start with uh, this faucet p right so the p is the faucet and you can see that a is a minimal element because it is less than or equal to every other element but there is no uh, you know maximum element for example right uh, I mean, I should not say maximum, there is no one here because uh, there is no element which is larger than uh, every other element. On the other hand, I, if I take p hat, I am going to introduce a zero here and also a one there. And now a is no more the zero, uh, but zero hat is, and uh, similarly, one hat is a, is a one. Okay. Now, a chain uh, is a faucet where any two elements are comparable. Suppose you take, uh, you know, uh, a set of elements and say that any two are comparable, right? One is less than equal to For example, if you look at the natural numbers, right? Natural numbers, you know that, okay, every element can be less than or equal to the, you know, uh, the following numbers, right? So, uh, and you, you know, like you can compare any two of them. So that is a chain, right? So you can see that. So with that uh, usual less than or equal to relation, the natural relation. Here is a smaller uh, subset. We've gone to three, four, five, and uh, one is less than or equal to two, two less than or equal to three, three less than or equal to four, four less than or equal to five. And because uh, you can see that you know every element is comparable because of the uh, uh, because of the structure. And uh, the length of uh, a chain is uh, the number of uh, vertices minus one, the cardinality of C minus one. So the length of this chain is basically uh, five minus one, which is four. Okay. So the length is four. Okay. <clears throat> so you can think of many other chains. It's very easy to see. Now, if every uh, maximal chain in a poset 
Okay, so for, you know, once you have, you know, uh, once you have defined the chain as a faucet, uh, a subfaucet uh, isomorphic to a chain is also uh, called a chain, right, in the, in the faucet. So if every maximal chain uh, in a faucet P has the same length n, then we say P is a graded uh, faucet with rank n. So if you look at this uh, example, so we looked at this example, right? So if you look at uh, you know the chains, maximal chains here, okay? So so what is a chain? So basically, like you know, so A B is a chain, right? Because A less than or equal to A comma B, right? so not A B. So A A B is a chain. But this is not a maximal chain because you know I can extend the chain below and above. So there is this uh, maximal, right? This chain. So the length of the chain is three here, right? Now, if you if you look through this, you can verify that every maximal chain has the same length. So every maximal chain has length three. So in such a case, we will say that okay, this uh, this uh, faucet is graded, and uh, its rank is uh, n. In this case, it is three, right? So the length of the chain is three. So therefore, the rank is three. Okay. Now. You can take the elements and then look at the, you know, the length of the chains from the smallest minimum elements, and then you can see that okay, if the if the length from the minimum element is whatever uh, i, then I can say that that is the rank of the element. Okay, so I will say that this is uh, one, this is uh, two, and this is three. So the elements in this uh, level you can verify that are all having rank two. Here all of them having rank one, and here this is zero, and this is three. So this is uh, you know uh, this uh, you know intuitively tells you why this is uh, graded of a you know given rank. Now uh, as an exercise, you show that uh, you know B n for any arbitrary n is also graded of uh, rank n. Okay. <coughs> now. Suppose uh, you have a faucet P which is graded with rank N and uh, suppose P subscript I, small p i, denote the number of elements of rank I uh, which is you know rank I is the distance from the minimum element. Then summation I is equal to 0 to N, P i x raised to I is called the rank generating function of the faucet. Okay. So, uh, the rank generating function is summation pi uh, x raised to i. So, for example, in this case, you have uh, you know p zero is one, uh, right? So, what is p zero? This that. So, p zero is one. I mean, this is small p. Yeah. P0 is equal to 1, then P1 is equal to 3, P2 is equal to 3, and P3 equal to 1, right? So, you have this, and then, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, you can now write a summation, you know, this values, and then you will okay, the rank generating. Okay, so, we will we'll not look at uh, the rank generating function at the moment. Uh, we will only uh, look at uh, it later uh, when we look at generating functions. Okay, so I think. Uh, okay. Now. Now, uh, an anti-chain or a clutter, uh, anti-chain or a clutter uh, is a sub faucet where uh, no two elements are compared. Okay. So, if you have, uh, you know, a subset where no two elements are comparable, for example, if you take uh, this faucet and if you take B and C, right, B and C are not comparable, right. 
Similarly, B and E are also not comparable. So the subset B comma uh, E or B comma C are uh, clutters or uh, anti chains. So you can find several uh, of these in these examples, right? For example, two, three, five, and seven uh, form uh, an anti chain, right? Five and uh, four form an anti chain, seven and uh, eight form an anti chain, right? So these things uh, are anti chains. Okay, now when you have uh, two elements x and y in a poset P, okay, and say a third element uh, W is said to be an upper bound for x and y, so an element W uh, is an upper bound for elements x and y if uh, W is greater than or equal to x and W is greater than or equal to y. Okay, so x and y themselves may not have any relation between them, right? there could be also, but uh, then an upper bound is, uh, you know, is an element which is greater than or equal to both of these elements. Right? So in this uh, example again, right, uh, for example, in, in the poset P, for example, D, right, the element D is greater than or equal to B and C. So B and C of D as an upper bound. Now, <clears throat> an upper bound uh, is called a least upper bound. Okay, so X and Y are elements uh, for which Z is an upper bound. So Z is a least upper bound. If for every upper bound, let's say W of X and Y, of course, uh, W is greater than or equal to Z. So Z is the, it's an upper bound, but it is there is no smaller uh, upper bound for uh, x and y. So then it is a least upper bound. So similarly, you can define the notion of greatest lower bound. Okay. And if a least upper bound uh, of x and y exists, then it is unique. So why? Uh, you think about it and prove it. It's easy to see, but uh, you know, try to argue it. So if a least upper bound of x and y exists, it is unique. And this uh, is denoted usually by x uh, join v, where x uh, disjunction uh, v is uh, read as x join v. And similarly, the greatest lower bound, uh, again, if x is unique and it is denoted by x uh, meet v or x uh, conjunction v. So we read it as x meet v, uh, x meet y, and uh, here we read it as x uh, join y. Okay, now a poset where every uh, pair of elements has a least upper bound and a greatest lower bound, it is called a lattice. Again, you know, there is, you know, there is a whole branch called lattice theory, but we will not uh, look at uh, much of lattices, just to, in case of, of some exercise or something mentions lattice, I just want you to know that, uh, uh, what is it? So that is the only reason uh, we defined uh, lattice. And it has very nice properties, uh, you know, uh, maybe in some of the exercises you can see uh, why it is uh, nice. Now show that uh, every finite lattice has a 0 and a 1. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, every pair of elements has a least upper bound and greater least upper bound. That uh, says that it is a lattice, but if it is also finite, then there is a unique minimum element and a maximum element. So that is why uh, it is it's a nice formula. Okay, I think that is uh, all about our uh, introduction to partial objects. Now, uh, we will, uh, oh, maybe, maybe uh, a couple of more, uh, couple of more uh, uh, slides, okay. So, uh, if you if you have two uh, posets P and Q, the Cartesian product of uh, P and Q uh, is uh, you know defined over the Cartesian product of the sets P and Q. The set of all x y is such that x belongs to P and y belongs to Q, such that the ordered couple x comma y is less than or equal to x dash y dash in uh, the product P cross Q. 
uh, if and only if x is less than or equal to x dash in p and y is less than or equal to y dash in q. So the uh, Cartesian product of the four sets is defined this way. Right? It's also called direct product in some uh, uh, textbooks. So the uh, Cartesian product of the two four sets P and Q is precisely defined over the Cartesian product of the sets P and Q, such that uh, uh, the tuple X Y is less than or equal to the tuple uh, X dash Y dash if and only if X is less than or equal to X dash in P and Y is less than or equal to Y dash in Q. So here is the pictorial representation or has a diagrammatic representation of the product. So, you know, so you have this uh, faucet and you have this faucet. You take the product of these two is obtained by uh, replacing, for example, you know, every copy, uh, every vertex uh, of the first faucet with a copy of the second faucet. Right. So I replace every vertex with a copy of the second faucet. And whenever uh, there is, you know, a relation here, now, the corresponding elements of these two uh, posets are joined in a relation, okay? The same relation that we are having here. And similarly, right here. So, so we get the product. Now, from this definition, right, if you look at this definition, you can see that the product uh, it does not depend on which way you are going to do the uh, substitution. You can instead you can take these vertices and substitute copies of this. So what happens is the Hasse diagram looks very different from the Hasse diagram that we got here, but they the posets are indeed isomorphic. So uh, try to uh, try to work out some examples and uh, convince yourself that if you replace uh, you know in different way you will get a different uh, structure of the Hasse diagram but the posets are indeed uh, isomorphic so take it as homework take some small example and work out take the product and see that uh, they are uh, they are isomorphic uh, if even if you take uh, p cross q or q cross p okay a homework uh, consider the chain of length two, I mean length one, which is two element chain, right? So just one and two, okay? So one is uh, the smallest element, two is the largest element. So one, two forms a chain. So the chain of length uh, one or uh, the chain of two elements uh, uh, is denoted C. Now show that uh, the poset that we looked at BN, right? Uh, is isomorphic to the n-fold product of C with itself. That is, you take this poset, multiply it with itself n times, and then you will get uh, a poset, and that poset is isomorphic to Pn. Okay. So this is the subset poset with the containment relation for the power set of n element set. Right. So that is Bn. So uh, this is what. Right. So product of C with itself n times. It's isomorphic to Bn. So this is a very nice uh, uh, homework. And uh, with that, uh, uh, yeah. So with that, we we finish the introduction to the posets and uh, try to look at a few more examples from the textbook, and then uh, then uh, convince yourself that you are comfortable with the notion of posets and you know the related concepts that we have defined here. Okay.